Hey everybody, my name is Philippe Crook with eXp Realty. I've been a realtor for over 20 years, but having a team in place has really able, enabled me to have a lot of success. And one of the crucial parts of the team is an escrow officer. And I'm super excited to have a really great escrow officer here named Sherry Chen with Glen Oaks Escrow. And I want to say thank you so much, Sherry, for joining us. Will you tell everybody a little bit about you and Glen Oaks? Of course. Thank you so much for having me, Philippe. First Absolutely. Of all, you know, it's an honor to be here. And <laughs> uh, I love talking about escrow and about my work because it is my passion. Um, Glen Oaks Escrow is a well-established escrow company. We have branches all over Southern California, and um, they've been in the game for well over 20 years now. So... We're a full service escrow company. Um, I myself, um, I work out of the Glendale location and I have uh, experience in residential, commercial property, as well as uh, bulk sales, which is the sale of a business and assets. Um, That's amazing. So a lot of people are going to say, I, I mean, I get this question a lot. What is escrow? And so will you explain what escrow is? <laughs> I get that. I do get that question a lot. I have uh, first time uh, home buyers who have a lot of questions and we are there to explain what we do and how we can serve our clients through this process. So escrow is the neutral third party that hangs on to the finances within a large scale transaction, whether it is real property or um, business. And basically, we are the middleman coordinating mm -hmm. between the buyer, the seller, their agents, the lender, the title company. We collaborate with everybody to make sure that deadlines are met and that uh, the funds are used appropriately and according yeah. to the contract. I always say that to clients, like they're the neutral third party company. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're not for one side or another. They're in the middle and they get told what to do, and I, and that's one myth that I that you brought up that I think is really important to understand is like you can't be told by one person what to do. Is that right? Absolutely, both parties need to be in agreement in order for us to move forward with whatever action is being taken. This is all about uh, an agreement between the parties. Hence what happens? You know, and I've had this happen in a lot of transactions before. What happens when one side just will not agree with the other side? I know, I know you've probably experienced that in your real in your escrow career as well, but what happens when one side says, Nope, I'm not signing that agreement? So what ends up happening with the earnest money? What ends up happening with the transaction? Well, the thing is that if they really cannot come to an agreement, first of all, escrow is not involved in any type of like that type of negotiation that doesn't have anything to do with us per se. Mm -hmm. We wait until the parties have come to an agreement and then we take that instruction and move forward with that. If the parties cannot come to an agreement and if for some reason the escrow cancels, the buyer's uh, earnest money deposit is still refundable prior to the removal of contingencies. That's the tricky part. I've, I've found um, that's probably where the most like litigation and mediation happens is regarding a cancellation of escrow and the earnest money deposit. Cause it in California, the earnest money deposit can be huge, huge sums of money. It so, and, yes. and sometimes the seller will dig in and say, no, I want this earnest money deposit. And the buyer will say, no, I need it back. You know, it can be a very, a very challenging um, situation when you're in that kind of uh, escrow. It can be. And that's why we have um, all these legal teams in place too. Glen Oaks Escrow has, you know, legal counsel, uh, the California Association of Realtors has legal counsel as well. Um, it's important. We need to make sure that the parties are protected. That's the main goal. And and again, you go back to that, that thing where you can't do something unless it's mutually agreed upon Absolutely. by the principles. Absolutely. I'm not taking instructions from the buyer and seller's agents. You know, everything needs to be confirmed with the buyer and seller themselves because they are the principals in this transaction. Yeah. And that's something that some some clients just don't get. Like, well, I signed this. Why, why aren't we moving forward? Like, well, the other party has to sign too. And, <laughs> and, and a lot of times I've had situations where a, a an agent will be yelling at an escrow officer. We're like, look, this is not 
we're not involved in this. You guys sign the paperwork <laughs> and then tell us what to do. Yes. I mean, of course, like tensions run high, you know, and or they can sometimes uh, there's it's it's a large transaction that's at stake. I can understand why buyers and sellers may be nervous throughout the process. Um, and I think that that's the wonderful thing about being in this position, too. Um, and having the knowledge that I do, I get to explain things to the buyer and seller. And hopefully, I think in this case, knowledge is power. So totally. the more knowledge that we have, the more information that we have, the more informed we can um, be moving forward. Uh, and that will only, I think, ease the worries. Of yeah, because if you, if you have clear expectations or if the client has clear expectations of what is going to happen, then it puts their fears aside. And if you're not willing to educate or explain something, then it's going to be a challenging transaction. That's why I always like to work with escrow officers who are willing to educate, willing oh, to yeah. explain the process, because this is a huge, huge transaction. It's probably the biggest transaction that most people will experience. So if you're not willing to kind of walk them through the steps of the process, it's going to be a rough transaction. I think that's absolutely right. Um, some buyers and sellers, they're they're nervous going through this. This is it's a yeah, large sum of money. There's a lot at stake for them. And what I get to do is make their life just a little bit easier, just a little bit less stressful throughout this transaction. Cause it can be very stressful. It can be very confusing for them. So whatever I can do to make this process easier for them, I absolutely will. I mean, sometimes, yeah, we call it a little bit of hand holding. It's necessary. If I put myself in their position um, and I didn't have the knowledge that I have, like I might be very confused too. And I would hope yeah. that somebody would be there for me in that way as well. Yeah. You know, available to me that if I call them, if I email them, if I text them, they're going to respond to me and I'm mm -hmm. going to feel a little bit safer about where this is going. Right. That, for me, that is, that is one absolute must when I'm working with an escrow officer is that they're willing to communicate. And I know that you said that that is one of your, your three essential things to have a smooth transaction is communication. Yes. And for me, a hundred percent, if an escrow officer is not willing to respond or, or is really late responding or doesn't respond at all, it's going to be a rough transaction. And I, I won't oh, work with an escrow officer like that ever again. That's it's funny that you say that. I feel like, cause communication is at the basis of, mm -hmm is the is the the top essential for me i think um i am also the type of person that you know if i'm up and i get an email like i'm probably going to respond to it even if it's late at night yeah. <laughs> because that's rare <laughs> i think the way that i see it is that if somebody <clears throat> is me at that hour it i mean they probably it's probably something important that needs to be brought to my attention you know if they are thinking about it at 11 p.m. it warrants a response right well, some people just don't have manners. <laughs> they will always call you at ridiculous hours. I'm Happens very respectful too. of business hours, but but sometimes there's an issue, you know, and and things pop up in real estate transactions. And it's nice to have, like, to someone have your back to say, like, oh, this is the scenario and this is a, a solution because it is a it is a team effort. Real estate Absolutely. is not. A, an island like you need a lot of people helping you throughout this entire transaction mm -hmm. it's very collaborative and it needs to be there's so many different moving parts and we're all reaching for the same goal i think sometimes because there's so many different people involved it, that gets kind of lost in the shuffle that we are working towards the same goal there's a couple other myths um that people talk about like one is um a myth that i've heard many times is like well what if I over over I send too much money into escrow? Am I going to get that back? And people think that they're not going to get their money back. <laughs> so, will you address that that myth? I've definitely gotten that question from buyers, especially like first time home buyers. Um, they they want to know that their fund exactly what their funds are being used for, and rest assured, they will absolutely know what their funds are being used for. Escrow is a highly regulated industry. And um, that's the whole purpose of that, that settlement statement to show you very clearly outlined um, exactly where your funds are going and exactly what's being paid for. We have invoices and supporting documentation for every charge that, and it needs to be there. Yeah. So every, I've, I've everything never, has to be tracked. Yeah. I've, I've, I always tell my buyers, rest assured, 
um, any if you overwire, any funds that are unused will be returned to you. There's nowhere else for it to go and it belongs to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's another one that I get a lot. What, you know, because you're dealing with people's personal information, mm -hmm. you need a lot of their personal information. You need yes. their social security numbers. You need their driver's license. You need previous um, mailing addresses. You need work in history. You need so much information. A lot of people are hesitant to give you that information because um, they're not sure if it's secure um, yes. and they're just nervous about it. Can you address um, that concern with, with people? Yes. I mean, we, we utilize DocuSign a lot. So there is a lot a, of uh, information that gets requested through DocuSign on our forms. And some of that is personal sensitive information. And I do want to be uh, mindful of the client's preferences as well. Some people don't prefer to use DocuSign. Um, some people like signing in person with me. That's, that's okay too. But in terms of us collecting the information um, through online uh through online methods, the cybersecurity is and the encryption is top notch. Um, we don't have issues with that um, for, because that is that's a big part of escrow too is handling the sensitive information, protecting the sensitive information. We and Glen Oaks escrow um, does have excellent cybersecurity in place as well for our emails and whatnot. So I understand why some people might be hesitant. Um, I do like to inform them of these protections in place. And also, if they really are not okay with providing me that information through an online method, then let's meet face-to-face. -face. You can write it down. Um, the, the files uh, get, they become archived, but after five years, we don't keep any records of it anymore. The other thing too, um, a lot of people... I, I talk about this a lot with my clients about wiring instructions mm -hmm. and, and there's so much fraud in the real estate industry of people phishing from, from emails that look really, really similar mm -hmm. to actual email addresses from title companies. What they'll do is they'll just change a word or two, or they'll change a letter and they will send uh, clients wiring instructions for this uh, an escrow um, mm -hmm. uh, escrow and it'll look like it's coming from an escrow company but the wiring instructions will go to their bank account and people who have wired in funds thousands and thousands of dollars into these fake or these real bank accounts but not the escrow account and then their money's gone like you can never recover it so how do you address wire fraud with clients Wire fraud has become more and more prominent, especially uh, in these more recent years. It is definitely on the rise. And this goes back to what we were talking about, communication. I always tell clients that if you are wiring, you call me, call mm -hmm. our office to confirm the wire instructions. Even if the account number is provided, you call and confirm anyway. Confirm 100%. the account that you're wiring, confirm the account number, the routing number, um, speak with somebody on the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's my fault, I prefer it to be me. Then I know for a fact that, you know, the correct information is being given to them. Um, so I, I always want to be available. I've had clients who will confirm the wire instructions three times for the <laughs> yeah. same wire. It doesn't bother me. If they want to be cautious. I commend them for it. I don't know. It's great. I mean, you, you're wiring in sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars into an escrow account. You want to make sure that it is going to the right place. So yeah. I, I think it's really, really important. Always call your escrow officer Absolutely. and confirm on the phone with the number that either your agent has provided or um, that you Google because you you don't want to make a fake phone call and then a fake wire. It's just, it can be a nightmare. So definitely something that um, it's a really, really good idea to call the escrow officer. Yes. I would say also if they have had correspondence with me directly before, I always make note of my direct phone number, right. my direct office line and our office, our um, general office number. So they have both numbers. They have multiple ways of reaching me and right. uh, they can always look back on those, that correspondence as well. Sherry, will you tell me one other um, really important thing that 
both buyers and sellers need to be aware of when they are doing a real estate transaction? I think it's definitely helpful to be um, aware of the deadlines that we are working with. So we have contingency dates, we have a physical inspection contingency, appraisal contingency, loan contingency, and our close of escrow date. And um, I think that agents are generally pretty good about keeping their clients aware of the contingency dates. Um, I always want to look at, um, you know, what day I need to be providing certain documents to the buyer and seller by. And on top of that, once that loan contingency is removed, we are, we're rolling towards closing. So I want to make sure that all, all, everything's in place to uh, ensure a smooth closing. And those deadlines are really, really critical, especially on the buyer side. Like if you, because you have certain contingencies where you can cancel the transaction and get your full earnest money back within a certain time frame. If you Mm -hmm. go past that time frame, it becomes a lot harder to get your earnest money back. Absolutely. In full, you know. Sometimes um, the seller will say, "Look, you're past your contingency date. We're going to keep your earnest money deposit." And then, and then that. Great, it's a whole nother thing. <laughs> yes, that's a conversation <laughs> for another time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I agree with you. Deadlines are super important. You know, we're all working on the same calendar. And sometimes I've had instances where the buyer's agent thinks that the contingency day is this day, but escrow think it's this day, and then the listing agent thinks it's another day. So it's like we all have to be like, what is in the contract? What what are we all agreeing upon? Because if it's not, we need to make an adjustment or we can do an amendment or an addendum just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the contingency periods are stated on the contract. So that's very helpful. And uh, we always want to make sure that everybody is on the same page about the contingency dates. Um, and what we do is just we just keep an eye on it. I always keep tabs on where my dates are. Um, if I didn't know what, when my file was closing, we'd have a big problem. Um, I, I, this has been really lovely. Thank you so much for educating us and and explaining what the escrow process is and who you are. If people want to get a hold of you, um, directly, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, you can call me or text me or email me. I'm very responsive, all different ways. And uh, my direct line is 323 210-1008. My email is s chen c h e n at glenoaksescrow.com. Perfect. Well, um, Sherry, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you spending some time with us and then educating us about the escrow process. And again, everybody, if you need a great escrow officer, uh, Sherry Chen at Glen Oaks Escrow is amazing. So um, send her your business because she (laughs) is a a wonderful person who loves to educate and is a great escrow officer. Thank you so much, Philippe. Those Your words are too kind. And I really really appreciate (laughs) Uh, you taking uh, the time to spend with me today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, thank you for all all you do. And uh, everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you, guys.